they hover around your table. One last major point. Life in style is also life in balance. Make sure you pay attention to all the values and dimensions of your life. One is family. If you have someone you care about, there is no value to match that. One person caring for another is life in the best of style and value. Protect it with a vengeance. If a chair gets in the way, I suggest you destroy the chair. It was wisely said so long ago, but is still true for today. There are many treasures, but the greatest of these is love. Better to live in a tent on the beach and have a love affair than to live in a mansion by yourself. Ask me. I know. Family must be cultivated like an enterprise, like a garden. Time and effort and imagination, creativity and genius must be summoned constantly to keep it flourishing and growing. Next is friendship. A priceless value, friendship. Friends are those incredible people who know all about you and still like you. Friends are those people who are coming in when everyone else is leaving. And as someone once suggested, be sure to make the kind of friends on your way up who will take you in on your way down. Life is a bit of both up and down, but with true friends, friends who care regardless of your circumstances, the ups are more automatic and the downs less devastating. I do have one very special friend though. If I was stuck in a Mexican jail and accused unduly, I would call this friend. Guess why I'd call this friend? He would come and get me. Now that is a friend. Someone who would come and get you. Guess how much you would spend to get me? Right, as much as it would take. It all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you. Work on mastering your mind. At first, you choose a partner based on appearance and enjoy it until you realize that your children will be raised not based on appearance, but based on values. You cannot find peace by avoiding life. Virginia Woolf An intelligent person always hides three things about himself his weaknesses, his sources of wisdom, and his true aspirations. Most people stay in the same place for a reason. The things they hold dear are the anchors that hold them in place. When we transform ourselves, the world changes because the world is a projection of ourselves. Deepak Chopra Disciplines is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Disciplines. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new and you've started a whole new life process. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines. <coughs> the least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The, the, the slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. 
You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 places. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy. Like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer. As several members in one body united, so are reasonable creatures in a body divided and dispersed, all made and prepared for one common operation. And this thou shalt apprehend the better, if thou shalt use thyself often to say to thyself, I am Melos, or a member of the mass and body of reasonable substances. But if thou shalt say, I am Meros, or a part, thou dost not yet love men from thy heart. The joy that thou takest in the exercise of bounty is not yet grounded upon a due ratiocination and right apprehension of the nature of things. Thou dost exercise it as yet upon this ground barely, as a thing convenient and fitting, not as doing good to thyself, when thou dost good unto others. What the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. If nobody helps you do it alone, it is never too late to be what you might have been. George Eliot Just because your path is different from others doesn't mean you're lost. Excuses are always there and easy to make. Finding a way is what takes courage. The way the universe opens up when you are truly in love is the greatest gift. Rumi Sun don't stop for nobody, man. Sun don't stop. Sun gonna be up in the morning regardless. That sun is gonna be up in the morning regardless. Regardless of how I feel and how depressed I am, the sun is gonna shine in the morning and at nighttime, the moon gonna be there and you gonna look up, these days gonna keep going by. So do you let the days go by and look up and you done wasted a year doing what? Or do you just pick it up? All right, well, gotta figure it out. Made some mistakes, life goes on. We figure out life from this point. You want to become best. You want to become champion. And now you want to say like you're tired. Who cares? You're tired or not? Nobody cares about you. He was tired. He had personal problems, family problems. Nobody cares. We're all writing a book. What's your book look like? Mm. What does your fucking book look like? Like your, your life is a book. You got a bunch of chapters in your book. But when they close that book... How good was the book? How good was your book? What was the ending to your book? Yeah. What was really your work ethic like and for how long did you stay disciplined? Um, well, I mean, I mean, every day, I mean, since, you know, 20 years, I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability, man, my vertical was a 40, wasn't a 46 or 40, 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive. Right, so you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast. Right, so I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And it just never changed. What I found is that winning doesn't happen on show day. It happens in the early mornings, painful workouts, long cardio sessions. to those who recommend persons to philosophers. Diogenes said well to one who asked from him letters of recommendation. That you are a man, he said, he will know as soon as he sees you. And he will know whether you are good or bad, if he is by experience skillful to distinguish the good and the bad. But if he is without experience, he will never know. If I write to him 10,000 times, for it is just the same as if a drachma asked to be recommended to a person to be tested. If he is skillful in testing silver, he will know what you are, for you will recommend yourself. We ought then in life also to have some skill as in the case of silver.